Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of D-Ray's Garage, where today I'm introducing you to our newest family member, the Jeep Wrangler JL. And the question is, is this a family Wrangler? Oh, that's put the cat right among the pigeons there. Anyway, let's, let's explore that idea. Hi, people! <laughs> what are you doing back there? So today I wanted to introduce you more formally to the Jeep Rubicon Recon 2020 JL. Not so much from an expert's standpoint, there are plenty of Wrangler experts out in the market and I fall, fall far from that category. As I think about the Porsche family, you know, I drive a 987 Boxster, which if you're familiar with that generation, and you know, if you drive an old JK or something before that, the more uh, analog of Jeeps. Uh, I think this is akin to a 718 Boxster or a Cayman, whereby it's got more of those creature comforts. It's got more of the cool stuff. I'll do some pans of the interior. I'll show you uh, some images. I'll show you some off-roading we're doing. And I think this is going to be a great family car for D-Ray's Garage. The girls love riding around in it. It's cool. We can take the top off. Uh, we can enjoy some social distancing. Yes, I'm headed to Costco and I have Amanda's uh, face mask because I couldn't find my own but I really think it's got a lot of qualities to it and it can still act for me as a an airport car if you will so it, it's a practical car it's got a two liter turbo engine in there with electric assist so it's even gas or fuel efficient even if you're going to use dyno juice in a big rig like this or what feels like a big rig as you know me coming from very small cars generally speaking this is a totally different kettle of fish. Now, where ordinarily it's, you know, a month of frenetic searching on Auto Tempest and websites and whatnot to find a car for me, this one came about very much on a whim when Anda, uh, Amanda even, when Amanda had said she'd always wanted a Wrangler and Jeep started promoting these really aggressive financing and leasing deals. I just wanted to check it out and we quickly snowballed into a car acquisition. Shocker, right? Yeah, D-Ray bought another car within six months. So sadly, that means the Golf R is gone. And so I should fleet update very quickly for those that care, because I know, especially depending on what order you may or may not watch my videos, it's quite easy to get lost in who's on first. But right now, the fleet consists of Amanda's Model X, a 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage, a 2011 Porsche Boxster Spider 987.2 and this Jeep Rubicon. So, you know, we're very, very fortunate to have this fleet, if you will. And this car really checks a different set of boxes to all the others. And I think when I think about, hey, is this a family car? Is this an off-road car? The answer is yes. Now, the variance in there is, do you skew off-road maniac? Do you skew family or do you kind of sit in the middle? And it's to be determined where we land on that. But so far, we've had a couple of outings with the whole family, which I love. Getting the girls together, not looking at their iPad is a big win these days. I know you parents out there understand what I'm talking about when I say that. And I just, I'm hopeful that this car will bring us experiences. And all of us, right? I keep buying two seat cars with a four person family. So it was time to do it right. And they didn't really enjoy getting in the Golf, and that was a more of an A to B car. This can be an A to B car, but so much more. And living in a state like Arizona, I think the the access we get to new, affordable, socially safe environments is second to none. And again, I'll to keep my face off the screen as much as I can. I'll try and post some some imagery that I've taken over the last few days, show you the car, show you where we've taken it. Um, if you look around the interior, like I mentioned before, it's plush. How this, how the recon differs from the Rubicon doesn't matter much to many of you, I'm sure, but the kids really objected to the Rubicon red dash. Don't know why. But this recon edition has a leather-bound dash. Uh, it's got the 8.4-inch screen, so we get that full entertainment experience with all the Bluetooth gadgets, gadgets Apple uh, CarPlay, Android Auto. On the exterior... We got a couple of really nice features. We got the black 
emblazoned uh, American flag there on each of the flanks. We have this nice, uh, basically a description of what this car has in terms of, you know, the Dana this and the 33 inch tires, etc., etc. So uh, it's a, basically a, like a permanent sales pitch for the car on what it is and what's in it. And as you can see here, I've got the full lid off, not just the freedom panels above me, but the full back. And, uh, you know, I'll post up front here, up top, so I should say, the hoist install video, if that's something of interest to you. For me, or for us, you know, we tried to hump it off one time. We got it off. It wasn't pretty. But more importantly, then you got to put it somewhere. So what the hoist has accomplished, whether it's this one or another, is it gets it up and out of the way. It's a perfect storage solution. And it takes away the pain of having your spouse get angry at you when you're trying to hump this thing off the back of a Jeep. So the hoist has been a, a nice addition. And I think that will cause us to take advantage of lid on, lid off more and more. Now, I'll have to shoot some other footage later because we went off-road this morning. And I think why I see so many of these lids on has to be the fact that these things are covered in dust. As soon as you go out, I mean, they ju it just fills with dust. It's like a sand bucket. What I find interesting about this Wrangler and, you know, when you look at the Spider in our garage, we took, we did a lot of modifying to that. And modifying is so straightforward on these Wranglers. They are built for that. So I think that's where, you know, it can go from this pretty plush uh, family car slash off-roader to mean badass off-roader very quickly. And what I've noticed in the early going, and again, it's all relative. And remember, I'm coming from German cars for the most part, or, you know, brands that are proud of their stuff, let's say. The Mopar stuff is really affordable. So be it, you know, bumpers, uh, cool additions for the roof. These uh, handles, which you may or may not see, but I think they were 30 bucks uh, for the front, 30 for the rear. You know, you can't, the tax on anything you buy for a Porsche is $30. So, you know, on a comparative basis, I was very excited and remain so about that. But whether or not I, uh, yeah, whether or not we modify this really hinges on how into off-roading we get. I think for my expectations of the off-roading we'll do, this car off the line is going to be just fine. It came off the production line ready to go. It's got the front and rear lockers. It's got the sway bar, electronic sway bar reject. Or release, I probably should say. Uh, it's got the power goodies. I can put auxiliary add-ons on if I want to put some cool lights on there, maybe. But, you know, when you think about lifting the car, when you think about tires and wheels, well, you know me. You know I'm going to probably wind up doing it. But I'm wondering, I'm trying to tell myself I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so we'll see how that shakes out. But the modularity of this particular vehicle is fascinating to me. The, uh, the cool customization ability. And, you know, there's definitely, I mean, e immediately you get into one of these things and you can tell that there's a community. So there's definitely a community. Everyone that ri rides in a Wrangler waves at the Wrangler driver. And that feels pretty cool too. So this adds so much dimension to our driving that uh, wasn't living in the garage already. I did watch some Jeep Wrangler videos last night for the true hardcore folks. Uh, it's not impossible that I can see myself getting sucked in, but I have a feeling that uh, family ties will keep me out. But the, uh, the prospect of going to Flagstaff, the prospect of going to Moab, which is all completely drivable from where we are here in the valley. Uh, yeah, I think at some point that that's in the cards and this is the car to do it. It will get you there and it will get you up and down stuff while you're there. You can have some jollies doing it. And uh, yeah, so I think that's a really nice dimensional aspect to, uh, to this car. I'm sure many of you that are Wrangler pros are wondering why a novice expat Brit like me picked up a Rubicon on the first Wrangler run. I just wanted, I wanted the goodies. I wanted the sway bar. I wanted things that would be really more difficult to add later on. Or if I did add those later on, I'd have to parlay this lease into an ownership experience. So let's talk about ride and ride quality. Uh, it's extremely comfortable, but coming from the cars I come from with stu such stiff chassis, it, it, it feels a little bit kind of wobbly, a bit wallowy, and it gets even more crazy when you start uh, pulling those sway bars apart on the front end. But in all the right ways, it feels right, it's just different. And so from a ride aspect, that's that. From the pickup, 
you know, I bet this thing will get to 60 in eight seconds on a good day downhill with extra gas. But I think, you know, it isn't inconceivable that we throw a little exhaust on there for a bit more personality in this little four banger turbo. And then, uh, you know, maybe put a cold air intake on there just for a little bit of extra performance. But again, that's not what these cars are about. These cars are about dropping the tire pressure and crawling up rock walls at an almost vertical uh, angle. So uh, it's an adjustment for someone that drives the cars that I have in recent times. It's, it's a shift, but it's a shift that as soon as, you know, the decision was made to move forward with this, it just felt right. So I think the prospects are great. I think it'll change driving. It's not just an A to B car. Uh, frankly, people spend all day going just a few miles that you could walk quicker. So the experience is definitely a huge part of this. So let's talk about value for money for a second. So I want to say that the uh, the MSRP on this car was in the mid 50s, low low to mid 50s, and I think you know they could probably go a little bit deeper on a full sale. But since we did a lease, I think I got out of there for just under. 50. So, you know, you can debate whether or not I got a good deal or not. It was a good enough deal for me. I got a nice trade in on the Golf R. I traded it in time where I didn't totally lose my shirt and get in trouble with Amanda. So that's definitely a big win. And so when you think about how much car you can get for your money, I mean, this is, um, this is surprising. It's got efficiency. It's got uh, dynamic personality. It's got flexibility. It can multitask with the best of them. What else do we need to know about the car? It's a heavyweight bruiser. I think it's 5,000, 5,300 pounds. I'll post the specs. That way you got all the, the goodies. I did not opt for the 3.6 Pentastar V6. So like I mentioned before, this is the four banger, four cylinder turbo model. And I'm sure again, purists will argue no replacement for displacement and they may or may not be right. Certainly the grunt is always a fun deal. But this whole package came together. I wasn't really heavily entrenched in either camp. And uh, giving up the Golf R four banger turbo, there was something poetic about it, at least in my mind. So help me out here. You saw some pics, you saw some video, you saw some off-roading, you heard some thoughts. What am I missing? What am I not capturing here? If you don't mind, drop a comment down below with your thoughts because it'll help the broader audience. Be memorable, be well. Stay healthy, stay clean, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye now. Whatever. Shut up, Daniel. Uh, uh. <laughs> blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, 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 bl